Good afternoon. It's a great day to be a Falcon. Michael Huger is a new men's basketball coach at BGSU. Coach, welcome back. Thank you very much. First of all, it had to be an emotional experience for you to first be contacted to come back to Bowling Green and then have to go through the interview process that, that has to be done and doing the interview and then waiting and then yes. hoping and waiting and all that. Try to, if you can, tell us what it felt like when the, you got the call from Chris Kingston that you were the man to take over the program. Uh, when I finally got the call from Chris, uh, it was late night uh, last week and uh, I just remember going in the room and waking up my wife. She was asleep <laughs> and uh, I told her, hey, well, finally, we finally, we finally got the job. So uh, it was definitely just overwhelming at the time and you had all types of emotions going through right now. Uh, the opportunity to come back home and it was just fun. Now it's also homecoming for Tanya, your wife, but for folks who don't know that, you met her while you were here playing, right? Yes, in 1992 we met at uh, Bowling Green State University. She's from Cleveland as well, which is about two hours from here. And uh, she was just ecstatic that we were able to come back in and, and get this opportunity. Well, I know a lot of Falcon Nation is thrilled to have you back as uh, the head coach of the Falcons. and. Obviously, you were a standout player here, and a lot of your teammates were here today. I think that was very important to you. It was very important to me. We had uh, guys like Ed Colbert, Derek Kaiser, Ron Street, uh, Shane Klyraminski. They all came out to show support, and it was just it was a comfortable feeling to see those guys here. And folks that remember you playing at BGSU, a standout point guard and an all-MAC player, and then a decade-plus playing professionally. Uh, now, eight years as a collegiate coach, or ten years all told, when you look back to your playing experience through your coaching experience, uh, how much did being a player for that long help you as a coach? Oh, it definitely helps me. Uh, you, you play in so many different systems and so many different options that you understand uh, as a player and now as a coach and, and different techniques that you learned from different coaches. So it was a lot of fun just to learn that and now being able to teach the guys the different things that we've picked up over the years. Well, your coach here at BGSU was Coach Laranega and then your last eight years as an assistant coach with Coach L at George Mason at the University of Miami. Talk about some of the main influences from Coach Laranega on uh, your coaching style. Uh, the main influences is discipline on what we picked up. Our guys are very disciplined in executing the play. Um, we just, the way we run our system, we play an up-tempo style, uh, a little bit of traps here and traps there, but we also were able to adapt, and that was probably the biggest thing that I've learned from him is uh, you don't have to force your system on a particular team. You have to be able to adapt to your team. And I thought we did a great job of adapting to our teams. Coach, we're also streaming live via the wonderful World Wide Web and uh, Jason Knavel, our uh, Sports Information Director, is going to relay a question from out in the, the uh, world of the internet. What do we have? Yeah, Coach, what do you think about the differences between Anderson Arena and the Stroh Center? Oh, the difference in Anderson Arena and the Stro. The the main thing with Anderson when we played, uh, it, it was packed. We had a we had a full house uh, pretty much every game that we played, and the crowds were awesome. The students were involved, uh, faculty, alumni, everybody was involved. Uh, that's the atmosphere that I want to create here, or we want to create here at the Stro Center. So that's something that I'm looking forward to. So we definitely need that atmosphere to get the kids, the students back. The faculty, the community, just everybody back involved with Bowling Green basketball. Yeah, and I, Coach, I sense that just from the short time that we've known that you were going to be returning to BGSU, the the feeling, the vibe of the Falcon Nation out there, and not just the former players, but alums that are, that are excited with your connection to the program. And I think the thing that I was most interested that you talked about in your introductory press conference was the community, reaching out to the Bowling Green community and making that a big part of this program again. That's something that you focused on. Yes, uh, the way I would like to do it is just get us back out the, the players, get them out in the community, get a chance to meet some people, uh, bring them back to us and have them come to practice. And the, the Junior Falcons program was a program we developed for little kids to come in and get a chance to meet our players and hang out with our players and just feel like a part of our program. I mean, that's you need them to feel a part of your program in order to buy into what we're doing. 
Coach, let's talk a little bit X's and O's, although you have to adapt like Coach L taught you, but if, if you have your druthers, if uh, a Michael Huger program is fully developed and got the players you want and have things going your way, what's your preference style-wise? We would, like I said, we would, if they change the shot clock to 30 seconds and the different things that they're trying to do, uh, we would press a little bit more, uh, a little bit more traps, um, tough man-to-man -man defense, half court, but we'll mix in a little zone here and there offensively We'll look to run uh, pick and rolls, a lot of pick and rolls, but mainly sharing the ball and getting the ball inside as well. I would like to have at least four guys in double figures, you know, every night. So we have a balanced attack where you can't just key in on one guy. And if he's having a bad night, your team is having a bad night. So that's what we're looking to do. Coach, I'm sure some folks would be interested in uh, the experience you've had recruiting, maybe some of the, the geography of where you recruited under Coach Larinaga or some of the players uh, that you've recruited or that kind of thing thing because as you said it's a lifeblood of the program talk about your background in recruiting and how you've done there and where you've had to go um, recruiting for me well started really at George Mason and focusing at George Mason we uh, recruited um, Ryan Pearson out of New York City he was the CAA player of the year was a guy that um, recruited over that way uh, Luke Hancock he was um, a kid I recruited out of Roanoke he was at Hargrave Military Academy uh, wound up leading us to a victory over Villanova in the uh, second round of the NCAA tournament here in, in, at the Q in Cleveland. Uh, he, he had a step back three-pointer to win the game. It was awesome. And he wound up transferring to Louisville and wound up being the Final Four MVP a few years ago at Louisville. So, um, you know, recruiting. And then we have Shane Larkin down at, at Miami. And, I mean, just the list goes on and on. Dave Henry, the starter. Um, recruiting is basically the lifeline of your program. You have to have good players and you have to be able to recruit nationally. You just can't recruit kids from a certain area. You have to be able to go into different areas and recruit. And that's been great for me because I'm great in pretty much every state. So <laughs> it's fun. Uh, you also touched on in your introductory press conference the fact that when you played, you, you felt that you had a team good enough to, to win the Mid-American Conference and make it to the NCAA tournament ultimately. You, you guys fell short of that goal, but you didn't shy away from throwing it out there that uh, that's goal number one, win the Mid-American Conference and get Bowling Green back in the big dance. Yes, I mean, that's been a goal. It was something we failed to do as a team, as a player, and now with that opportunity to do it as a coach, I mean, that's that's what you live for. That's what every coach's dream is, to get back to or get to the NCAA tournament. In our case, is getting back, and, um, you know, we're, we're going to do everything in our powers to get there. When uh, you accepted the job, obviously, you, you got the chance to meet with the, the guys that are here as part of the basketball program right now, and I'm sure it was uh, emotional and uh, intense and all the things we might imagine. Uh, without getting into too much specificity, what was your general feeling about meeting the guys? Uh, it, it, was, it was great for me to finally meet them. Uh, I haven't been back to the program in, in several years, so I never had opportunity to just talk with them. And, and just having that chance to... Uh, um, tell them a little bit about myself and the program and how we want to build this program and the opportunities that they'll have here. It was great and I thought well, all the guys uh, bought into what we're doing. And also I think for the guys on the team maybe it was a bit of a uh, impressive for them to see all your former teammates back. Do you think that made an impression on the guys that, hey, this is a guy with a lot of connections here and a, and a real heartfelt connection to Bowling Green? Yes, um, this is this is a place I've called home from uh, 89 to 94. So, and once I left, that relationships with those guys never stopped. So we continued on. We would come back and, and hang out with each other uh, throughout the years. And for those guys to see that, that's what I want them to have with their teammates you know and that was really the purpose of having those guys come back so they see that you know 20 years later we are still friends and you know you, you went on the court together and you lose on the court together but you remember those friendships and of course when you look at your background uh, from New York City originally as a high school player come to Bowling Green that's quite the dichotomy yes. uh, then you play overseas a number of stops in Europe a world traveler and uh, then you're at George Mason you know Washington DC you're in Miami 
Hey, you're back in Bowling Green. We'll yes. talk about going from big city to small town, right? Uh, it's, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I, I'm a city guy, but I got used to the quiet when I was out in Longwood. That's where it started. Oh, Longwood. yeah, Longwood. Yeah. So that's where it all started for me, and, and that was, that was I enjoyed that atmosphere. It's pretty similar to Bowling Green, and that's what it reminded me of. And then hitting the big city in D.C. and Fairfax, Virginia, where everything is fast and back to the traffic, and then you go to Miami, and the traffic is even worse. So, you know, I'm looking forward to being able to drive into work and, and getting hit in two minutes or less. You can drive from Stroh to your house right. wherever you move in Bowling Green in five or ten minutes. Okay. And, uh, Coach, obviously, uh, when you talk about getting a head coaching job and you get the connections, I'm sure you consulted with Coach Laranega about uh, eventually becoming a head coach. And when this came up, what kind of advice did he give you as, as you left Miami to take over your own program? As when when – he he groomed us for years to become head coaches. So when the opportunity came about, he helped us in getting to that next level. And uh, the one thing he said before I left is, "Hey, if if you if you're yourself and you be you, they'll love you." No doubt about it. That's the best you can do is just be yourself, Coach. We are thrilled to have you here back at BGSU. I'm thrilled for you and your family. It's obviously a great homecoming for you. We look forward to great success here at BGSU and talents up. Thank you.